Hi guys, I'm Ivan and today I'm going to make a very special episode for you. I received a lot of requests for doing a color tattoo tutorial and here it is one for you. As you know, the color tattoos are quite popular at the moment but actually a very complex content. In this video I will present you the actual speed I am working with, in other words, no time lapse video. This makes it a bit longer but I guess also a bit more educational as you can see the real movements I am doing while I am working. Of course, color realistic tattoo is a huge tema and I will cut it to the more tutorials. In this one I will speak about the 5 of the most important stuff you must know about the color tattooing. These are the rule of thumbs that I am using for each and every color piece, either I am tattooing or painting. Now without further ado, let's go to the number 1. Color harmony and the contrast between cool and warm colors. Before you start to make any color project it is good to know what will going to happen and in short you must be familiar with the design or the tattoo reference. One of the most important stuff when you are making a realistic color piece is to achieve a good harmony between a cool and a warm colors. This is one of the most beautiful contrasts you can give to your tattoo. I can show you as an example on the project I am working on today, my main color combination will be mostly between the complementary colors blue and orange and all the variation out of it. The bluish face of the clone will contrast in a very beautiful way with the fire orange hair. But what is even a complementary opposite colors? If you open a color wheel, you can see that the color blue is right against the orange one. As more as you push the blue into the green side, actually the orange starts to become more reddish orange. And other way around, as long as you move the blue into the purple side, the complementary opposite color of it starts to become orange yellowish or yellow orange. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but it's not. As soon as you start to understand how it works, it starts to be natural to use it and it helps a lot in future. Combination of two complementary opposite colors is one of many color harmonies what exist in the world. This is one way of using warm and cool colors together in a perfect harmony. As example, if you start to add blue into the orange and mix it together. You will neutralize pretty much the orange inside of it till it become grey on the end. Like this you can pretty much achieve every color you need in every value and saturation you want it. Example, if a color is too red, add a bit of green in it and it will kill the reddish inside of it. If a color is too yellow, Adding a bit of purple will neutralize it. One place where you can check which is the perfect complementary color matching to the one you pick is when you're going to the Procreate color wheel. Go to the tab says Harmony and you can check it. There it shows the perfect color matching at the perfect hue, value and saturation to the one you pick. Using a limited palette. Once you know what happened between two complementary colors, you can imagine how much combinations you can make just with the primary and secondary color palette. A bit of knowledge and a lot of experimenting. The truth is that you need just the three primary colors, red, blue, yellow, a bit of black and white and you can achieve pretty much every color what exists in the nature. Take example of your printer. It has just magenta, cyan, yellow and black. 
and just imagine what for a quality of colors your printer has just with these few colors, which is basically representing the primary color wheel. Now I don't want to tell you that from tomorrow on you must work with the three primary colors, just want to say that you don't need to have all the colors at the market to achieve good results. Sometimes having all these different colors make it even more difficult for you to choose which color actually you need. Me personally, I have my own palette which is around 12 colors, actually the most basic ones and out of it I can achieve every tone or color what I need in every tattoo. Painting is actually the best way for you to train work with a limited palette. This is one of the best exercises you can do if you want to step up your color tattoos. So like always, to make a better understanding of how the mixing colors work, go and try out. Buy a cheap limited palette of oil or acrylic paints and go for it. Give a place for your artistic freedom and I can promise you, I can guarantee you that you will see the results immediately. Number three in my list is to not dirty up the colors. Now here are a lot of different techniques of applying a color under the skin relating to the styles of the artists. Me personally, I'm mixing the ink straight into my needle and build up the piece step by step, work on a small part of the body at a time. I'm using mostly a small needles like 3 round liner, 7 round shader and 7 magnum soft edge. This helps me a lot to go down with the voltage and not to damage the skin as well. Also to be much more precise and keep my colors clean till the very end. Now if you are a beginner, I would suggest you to start always from the dark tones, especially if there are any black parts. This is because the black and in general the darker color is very easy to dirty up the lighter tone. In some cases, I can start by overlaying the bright color as undertone and then slowly apply a bit darker tone on top of it. But this is mostly when I'm mixing very light colors, like for example working on a gradation between yellow and orange. Light colors are really easy to getting dirty and at the end the color to look sloppy. This is not the result what we are searching for. That's why. Try to avoid working with a dark color next to already applied lighter one. So generally, just start with the dark parts and once you are done on the complete square, then come back and do the light colors on the top of it. Like this you will avoid muddy colors and your color will look always solid and shiny. You can do a small break always when you finish a part of your tattoo. This is a good for a few reasons. First of all, you will get a time for the skin to get closed and then will be much more difficult for you to get it dirty. Second reason is, once you are done with some parts, it is a perfect time to give a small break for you and your customer. I suggest you to make breaks approximately every one to one and a half hours for like five to ten minutes maximum. This relaxing your back and give a good break for your eyes. So number three is start from the darkest area and save your highlights and the light tones for the very end. Number four of five most important stuff you have to know about color tattooing is the skin. Actually the quality of a color piece depending very much on the skin you are working on or on the photoshop skills for some artists out there after the tattoo. <laughs> I'm joking of course, but now seriously the skin is really important part of the color tattooing. From my experience the best skins for tattooing in general are the lighter ones. As darker the skin is, as more difficult, especially for the light tones, is to show up through it. This is simply because the actual colors stay under the skin. Other words, the skin is on the top of the colors. As darker the skin is, 
it kills and dirty up the brightness of the colors. And the opposite of course, as transparent or lighter the skin is, as clearer and brighter the colors stay with the time. That's why also the sun actually damaging the skin and your tattoo losing contrast as more as you showing it to the direct sunlight. So in short, it is very beautiful when you have tan after going to the beach or solarium, but it's quite bad for your tattoos. So if you don't like how bright your skin is, go and cover it up with tattoos instead of solarium. It is cooler anyway. I suggest my customer to not plan any big holidays at least one month after doing a tattoo. Even after this period is much better if you don't expose yourself to the direct sunlight. It could be very bad, especially if your tattoo is fresh and it could cause even an infection in some cases. If the tattoo is healed, you can use a high level sun factor cream which partly protect your tattoos. And last but not least, number 5 of 5 is how to not overwork the skin. I remember the times when I was struggling with apply the color under the skin. It was either too much bleeding or the color was not really working like I expected to work and even when I finally have managed to get it into the skin, most of the time customer come back in a few weeks and the colors was not even close to this what it was in the first place. But where actually was the problem? As maybe you know, every of us start to blame the customer that he don't take a good care of his tattoo, the skin was bad, needle was not cool and so on and so on. Me as well, until I realized that the most of the time the mistake was completely on me. I was extremely overworking the skin in the idea to feel the color better and solid, but in reality I just damaged more and more the skin. It took me a lot of hard years till I developed the technique I have today. And believe me on that, there is no shortcut on this. You have to go through all the struggles again and again till you develop the skills. A good technique is very important for color piece. The advice I can give you laying on my own experience is as less you damage the skin as better results you will have after healing. I am working on a very low voltage, approximately 6 volts on a critical power supply using my Stigma Rotary Spear. Slow movement in combination with the low voltage are the key techniques I am using to not overwork the skin. Using small needles can help you slow down a bit and actually keep you concentrated for the whole process. Like this you have full control of the machine and you see exactly what you are doing. Mixing the right colors directly into the needle allowed me to apply it from the first pass and avoid coming back on the same place again and again. Try to avoid working back and forward running all over the place. Make yourself a good plan and try to stick to it through the whole process. Once you are done with the color, try to not come back after a few minutes and repeat on the top of it trying to make it stronger. You have mostly one pass when you're working a color piece, especially if it's realistic. Keep it simple and slowly you will develop your skills and techniques. So friends, these are the 5 most important things about color tattooing for me. Let me know in the comment below what are your favorite techniques and tricks. I would love to hear from you. If you think this video was helpful for you, smash this like button and this will help me grow up my channel and make more and more content for you. Subscribe to my channel if you still aren't and don't miss the next episode. Don't forget to share this video to your favorite social network so your friends can see it too. I would very much appreciate it to see you next week. Love you guys and stay safe.